He just got married. Yeah. In Dublin. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what made you choose Dublin? What made you choose Ireland? Very, it's a romantic place. Yeah. And we've been here a couple of times. And last year during Hilconomics, I got the idea finally to pop the question. So I thought it would be a good idea to uh, to do it here. Yeah. How did it go? How was the uh, the, the ceremony? Very simple, very quick, in and out, you yeah. know, down there at the municipal building, and uh, it was great. Beautiful. Well, congratulations. Thanks. And moving on to a more serious topic. What could be more serious than <laughs> betrothal? <laughs> Isn't love the most important thing in the universe? Yeah, especially when it's under the eyes of God. You've got to have that unity. In Irish, God needs bankrupt to know. God. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a reputation as provocative, provo you want to provoke outrage, um, not against you, but against the tyranny of this economic oppression that's raining down. Stacey, are you comfortable with the, um, the provocative nature of, of uh, for instance, the financial rate metaphor? Am I comfortable with it? Um, well, no, that's the point. It's an art piece. Yeah. Uh, I don't myself come up with those, but that's what Max's role is, and I'm the uh, I'm the I'm, I'm the one who uh, censors and edits him. <laughs> <laughs> so underneath the pressure that you must get to like tone it down, have you got any plans to tone it down anytime soon? Or well, it's a reflection of the outrageousness of the situation. So the situation becomes more outrageous than then the rhetoric has to at least match mm -hmm. the outrageousness of the situation. So as soon as the uh, bankers are in jail, then they tone down the rhetoric. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the goal. And until that happens, then we have to stay in the fight. Yeah. For me, it makes perfect sense. I mean, molestation, when you cause the suffering, you get a position of trust. And of course, this uh, economic degradation is causing the suffering of children, Young, well, there's uh, a violation uh, uh, of trust and, and a violation uh, that's been sanctioned by institutions. And we see in the UK, the media, major media institution, has been in part of a major pedophile scandal. Mm -hmm. In this country, the Catholic Church, a major institution, has been involved in a pedophile scandal. Uh, the bankers on Wall Street, are, it's a major institution, and they are engaged in the financial violation mm -hmm. that is no less disruptive and, and outrageous than and, any of these other uh, violations that are going on. It causes real harm, real suffering. What, what lacks in the discourse about how to describe what's going on in the banking industry are uh, adjectives, you know, because typically the crimes are discussed in the terms that are favored and approved by the bankers. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, wow, we missold a product that didn't quite quantify the accurate level of risk that was passed through the collateral, you know, the collateralized debt instrument. Well, what does that mean? It means nothing. So you really, it's like saying, you know, Jimmy Savile saying, well, I met, I met the young, you know, I, I, I accidentally had sex with a corpse at a uh, orphanage, but then I went on TV and we had a great time. Okay, so we're supposed to just ignore that because it was done with a cheeky smile. Yeah. So he's a cheeky, a cheeky pedophile. And these are cheeky banking violators. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, they're causing real damage. If it was just a one-off, uh, and uh, you know they were a, 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 a case of, of con uh, engaging in gross misconduct, that would be something else. But this is an institutionally promoted mass racket. Mm. So as all of these things come to light and the outrage grows, do you see the tides turning? Do you feel that? with this knowledge coming to light and the outrage growing that we will start to see m more serious prosecutions and, and, and perhaps even floods of bankers going to jail? Right. Well, it, each, each area seems to be a bit different. Um, now, you know, when you study the French Revolution, those ideas were around for decades before it was uh, decades of thinkers writing about these things and talking about, you know, enlightenment sort of ideas. And then it spontaneously erupted. Nobody could have said, oh, you know, predicted what would happen. Um, but one thing you can apply from there is that that absence of justice does 
it, it, it's not even saying like, oh, it's going to happen or I want it to happen. It's just the historical pattern is at a certain point, once it breaks, it broke in Egypt. You know, here was a population terrified of the police state, uh, a dictator backed by the mightiest army in the world, and it dissolved mm -hmm. in a matter of days because the people lost the fear. And they lost the fear, but first they were angry. And once they knew that justice system and nothing was there for them, they might as well, you know, give me liberty or give me death. Mm -hmm. It comes to that point always. So, I, I think in the U.S. and U.K. in particular, it's quite brazen. Mm. Here in Ireland, it's very brazen, but the population right now is going through, from my observation compared to Kilconomics last year and this year, well, first of all, there's a lot fewer young people. Yeah. 87,000 have emigrated, and I think you see that in the audience, it's mostly middle-aged mm. or older. Um, but here, the, the younger people that we've seen, they, they're, they've accepted these private debts of private bankers as their own, and they feel they have a moral obligation to it. Some populations will do that. They'll just say, okay, we're ready to be slaves, that's it. Um, and some slaves will rebel. Mm. And I would think in America it seems a bit rebellious. Um, mm. That, that's the area I would watch the most, even though that's the least, that's the country with the least actual real cost, which is why they don't have austerity measures. It's because they have the world's reserve currency, they can just pretend, you know, yeah. they can just, it's a matter of accounting. Yeah. So. The world reserve currency, some people are saying that the de facto world reserve currency is Bitcoin now, because it's such a global en uh, entity now. Um, and with those types of new innovations, I personally have a lot of, I, I, I have a high hopes for the future and um, and looking forward to that. So, <coughs> well, thank you ever so much for, for giving me some time. Oh, sure. And uh, have a safe journey back. Excellent. Thank you. How'd you like Kilconomics? I loved it, yeah. I mean, I, for me, it's just been like a dream come true. Coming to Ireland, I've always wanted to come to Ireland. Oh, I didn't know you hadn't been here. Oh. Never been here. My, my dad's mum and dad from Ireland, so whenever we have a family get-together, it's always like Irish dancing, they clear all the space, and these start flying up in the air. And uh, I've always heard stories about how beautiful this place is. Max is good at that. Well, he's flying up in the air doing the Irish jig. <laughs> you do the river dance. Not, not quite. But. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks.